You're watching Tamaron's Tactics. This is Dominions 4 Gameplay Tutorial Part 1. Hello, my name is Nuck Tamaron. My objective with this video series is to show you the tactics that I use so that you can employ them in your game. I'm going to play a full multi-hour game of Dominions 4 from setup to victory, and I'm going to walk you through all of my thoughts and actions throughout the entire game. If you watch this video tutorial series and then go play your own game of Dominions 4, you're going to be able to just dive right into the game instead of spending lots of hours making mistake after mistake after mistake. Don't do that, okay? Just watch me and I'm going to show you how to play Dominions 4 from setup to victory. Let's get started. We're going to create a new game. The smallest map is Talus, so that's what I'm going to choose. It looks like this. We're going to call this game Tamaron. First option is which age to play in. There's about 25 or more different fantasy races that you can choose in each of these ages. Uh, I'm going to choose Middle Ages. And my favorite race in Dominions 4 is Cetus Miasma. This is a lizard man race. I just like lizard men, so let's go ahead and go with them. Our opponents in this game, I'm just going to do a one-on-one -on -one for a nice short game on the smallest map, okay? My opponent in this game is going to be Asphodel Carrion Woods. Satyrs, Harpies, Centaurs, Minotaurs, but they're evil, so they've got some undead in there, and they use necromancy and that type of thing. Here's the description of Cetus. Tells you all about what our lizard men, uh, our lizard folk are like. The important things to know about this screen are that A, Cetus prefer warm provinces and are weak in cold provinces. B, our land spreads disease. Whenever we have dominion in a province, it'll spread disease there from our marshes. C, our dominion increases our income and, and massively decreases enemy income. Okay, well, these are all very important things. And the last thing that's really important here are that the spheres of magic that we use in this race are death, nature, water, and astral. The next step is to create your pretender god, which is your avatar in this game. You have 500 points to start with. The first thing that we need to choose is a physical form, and each of these physical forms have a different amount of points that they cost and are of varying strengths and weaknesses. Uh, if we wanted to choose this ant lion right here, he costs 60 points, so that would leave us with 440 left. He wouldn't be a very good avatar for Cetus, however, so let's take a look at the physical forms. There's a whole lot. This is just a tiny subset of the total selection of physical forms in this game. All right, Cetus has these to choose from. They've got some snakes and some dragons, okay? There's, there's uh, uh, you know, lizard sorcerers and liches, and there's some, like, giant ravens and sphinxes. It could be a statue or a fountain, okay? We're going to choose the nadir of the moon. He's kind of a weird-looking, ibis-headed hieroglyph guy. He's very good at research, He's a fortune teller because he's connected to the moon. He can foretell events and prevent them from happening when they're bad. He has three astral magic to start with, which is pretty decent. That's like star magic a lot of the time. And then he has a starting dominion of three, which isn't too bad. I like the nadir of the moon. He costs 270 points. So if we choose him, he's going to leave us with... 230 points remaining with which to use to build our magic and our dominion and select our imprisonment. So the first of those is the magic. This is going to define what his magic spheres that he can cast are. And you can see as soon as we selected him, it put three astral magic right here. Okay, It also copied his dominion right here. So three astral magic, we want to bring that up to four. Whenever you put a point into a sphere of magic that you already have, it costs eight points plus eight for every point that you've already put into it. So we've got three astral to start with. I have 230 points. I'm going to spend eight points and bring that up to four, leaving us with 222 design points left. Now, you may have noticed that when I did that, it put magic resistance plus one next to our bless effect. Now, when we bless a sacred unit... Okay, you have a bunch of units in the game. Some of them will be sacred. Our priests can bless them, all right? When they're blessed, they'll get morale plus one, and now they'll also get magic resistance plus one because we have 
Astral 4. If we look at View Nation description right here, this is Cetus's description that we just looked at just a second ago, okay? The magic spheres that they're good at are Death, Nature, Water, some Astral, okay? So we've chosen Astral. I'm also going to choose Nature. I like the way that Nature and Astral work together in the spheres in the game, which we'll see in a little while, okay? Now, I have zero Nature to start with, and we can see right here it says New Paths cost 60 points. Different physical forms have different costs related with how many new, with new spheres. Like if I chose this master enchanter, for example, for him, new magic paths cost only 10. So he's really good at learning a bunch of different types of magic. Okay. The nadir of the moon is a little bit more closed minded. He's focused more on astral magic, but I'm going to also teach him nature magic. So I'm going to spend 60 points of our 222 points to give him one point in nature magic, which brings us down to 162 points left. Now I want to add three more points to nature so that I can get that bless effect for having four nature. So I'm going to put one more point in there. As you can see, that brought us from 162, uh, from 162 to 146. Okay, it's going to cost more each time, eight more every time you click into it. Okay, so here's 122 points. I'm going to bring it up to level four, leaving us with only 90 design points left. Okay. But it also gives us this hit point ability now. When we bless, it's now morale plus one, magic resistance plus one, and hit points plus three. Next up is your dominion. The dominion is a very important concept in this game, hence the name. Dominion is the strength of your religious influence in a province. Okay, the map is made up of a bunch of provinces, okay, and each of those provinces are going to have a certain amount of dominion in them. Either your dominion or another god's dominion. And dominion is spread by temples, by preaching, by having your demigod stand around and having people see him and, and, and be in awe of his presence, that type of thing, that increases your dominion and spreads dominion to neighboring provinces. When you get up to enemy area, enemy territory, you're probably going to run into enemy dominion. And whoever dominion is stronger is going to push over into the other land and start to be, have your dominion in enemy territory, okay? And that's a goal that you really want to push for with Cetus because you may recall that their ability is to create swamp land, spread disease, and hurt the income of, of enemies when they have their dominion in their land. So we really want to push our dominion into the enemy's land very much. That's a very important theme with Cetus is pushing your dominion into enemy land. So we want our dominion to be as strong as possible. Right now it's only three because the nadir of the moon by default has dominion three, okay? So I want to bring this up. Right now we have 90 design points. If I put one point in dominion, it only costs seven points there. You see, it brings us down to 83. But if I bring another point into it, it's now 69, 48, 20, negative 15, negative 57, negative 106 to have 10 dominion. Now that's the strongest your dominion can be is 10 points. So now we have to gain those points back. Okay, there's a couple of ways that we can do that. Now one is by increasing our imprisonment down here, this third section on this screen. By default, your demigod, your pretender god, I use those terms interchangeably because I'm an old Dungeons and Dragons guy, okay? I like to say demigod over pretender god. It's the same thing, okay? So uh, you can start with your demigod being awake. If you want to gain 150 points by choosing dormant, that would put us at 44 design points instead. You see, 100, negative 106 all the way up to 44. If we did that, then our demigod would not arrive in the game until one year later, okay? About 12 turns. It varies a little bit. So it's like 10 to 14 months or so, all right? I'm going to go ahead and leave him awake. I'm going to try to get those points somewhere else because our pretender god here has excellent research ability and I want to be able to have him just research really hard right at the beginning so that we can get some spells ready to go. All right. So instead, I'm going to get those points back by putting negative attributes into our dominion. To the right of your dominion right here are these six icons, and these six icons are called dominion scales. 
I wish there was a little divider right here so you could visually see that they were separated. Just know that the, your, this is sort of separate from those, okay? But all of these others are dominion scales. They go as far as up to plus 3 or negative 3, okay? And whenever you put points into the positive factor, it's going to cost you design points. If you look, negative 106, if I put one point of order, that is everybody thinking alike, okay? That would bring me all the way down to negative 146. If we put one point of negative order, that's turmoil, that is constant feuding with people in our empire, then that would give us points and bring us all the way up to negative 66. You'll also notice that this order or turmoil scale affects income, unrest reduction, that is getting rid of bandits basically, and events. How often do random events happen in your provinces? So if it's a land of order, then you would have extra income, you would have a good ability to get rid of bandits, and you would have less frequent random events because everything's just kind of orderly and random events aren't that frequent. If we had negative three, which is turmoil three, that would be a income malus, a unrest reduction, reduction, and more often random events. Now, you may recall that our nation description says that Cetus's dominion increases our income. Right here it says, within provinces influenced by this dominion, income is increased by 1% per level of dominion. So if I have dominion 10 in a province, if I've got a temple there and I've preached and I've prayed and I've got my dominion up to the maximum level of 10, then I'm going to have plus 10% income there. All right? So... Having negative 15% income plus 10% income is only negative 5% income, which is trivial. That's not a big deal, okay? So it, this is kind of like not really a negative to me. Just, it's just barely a negative, and I'm getting back all these points. So that's not a bad deal, okay? Conversely, it also reduces by 5% per level of dominion when in enemy provinces, okay? The income of enemy provinces is reduced by 5% per level of dominion. So let's say that I have strong dominion up against the enemy's territory, and let's say I've got 10 points of my dominion in his land, okay, which is unlikely. It's kind of an extreme example, but let's just say that. okay. Then he would have negative 50% income in that province plus another negative 15% because of this turmoil. So it would maximize the effect of the main thing that I'm trying to do there. Okay, So I think that negative 3 in this scale, which is three turmoil, is excellent to go with, is, with Cetus. So we're going to do that. And that brings us into a positive number. Now we have 14 design points. So now if I wanted to hit start, we could, okay, because we're not negative in the design points. We've spent all of our points. Now we still have more options, however. Now all these other Dominion scales are right here, and we should look at them, okay? The next one over is productivity and sloth. Are your people really productive, or do they sit around all day? And that affects, let's bring this back to zero, so we can just look at all these, okay? That affects income and resources. Are they positive or negative? You see? The next one is heat and cold. This is automatically set to your race's natural environment. Okay. This next one is growth and death. Does everything grow really well, or does do your people just constantly die off? And you can see this affects Income, supplies, and population growth, okay? Next over is fortune or misfortune, and that's basically how often do events happen and are they good or bad, okay? And then last is magic or drain, and that is, are you going to, is your land going to be one where people cannot think and casting spells is really, really hard, or it will, will it be a land where re, it's easy to research new spells and casting spells is really, really easy? Okay, so what we're going to do to get rid of this negative is we're going to give us that three turmoil so that we have that negative income right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and put one negative into the growth cycle. So that's one death. We're at 14 design points. I'm going to add one death, which brings us up to 54 points. And then I'm going to spend those points to give us one positive in productivity, leaving us at 14 points. You see, if I put one here and then take away one here, it leaves us at the same spot. Those are scales, so they're equally weighed left or right, all right? So we're going to go with three turmoil, one productivity, and one 
death. And the total effect here is going to be income negative 16%, negative 3 unrest reduction, plus 15% resources, negative 15% supplies, a slight reduction in population growth of point just tiny, and then slightly more often events. And we're going to have four astral for nature, and we'll be awake. That's the god of Cetus. Let's call him Nuctamaron. So that's going to bring the first video in this video tutorial series to a close. Stick around, and in the next video, we're going to start the game, take a look at the map, and get started playing Dominions 4. Again, you're watching Tamaron's Tactics, and my name is Nuck Tamaron. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for the continuation of this gameplay tutorial series.